space. There's still so much we don't know. What are all these other worlds actually like? Could any of them support life? Much of what we do know about space is limited to telescopes or spacecrafts that fly by planets and moons taking photos and gathering data from afar. We do have some robots, like the Mars rovers, that actually roam on other planets. But there's some limitations to what these robots can do. What's really interesting for NASA is a lot of times the most exciting science is these exposed rock faces, where you can see the strata of all sorts of history of a planet you're exploring. And they want to get their instruments up there. And right now, it's really hard to do. That's Vitas Sunspiral. He's a robotics researcher at NASA Ames. And these are the kinds of problems he thinks about. We have no robots that can go and like clamber around the edge of a cliff. It's also super hard to land these rovers. And you're moving at really high speeds because you just traveled across a big chunk of the solar system. So you have to protect the robots. NASA uses things like parachutes and retro rockets and hovering and dropping it on a cable. Uh, really impressive feat, but you don't use it again throughout the rest of the mission. And every pound that you launch to space is really expensive. Yeah, these rovers are super pricey. I'm talking billions of dollars. But lucky for us, Vitas and his colleagues at NASA Ames are working with collaborators at UC Berkeley to develop cheaper, more agile space robots. So the challenge is to be able to make both a lander and a rover that's smaller, cheaper, more robust, and more flexible that can handle more operations than traditional rovers. That's Alice Agagino. She's an engineering professor at UC Berkeley, and she and her team are working with Vitas on this project. So what do cutting edge researchers turn to for inspiration? Springy elastic bands that babies love to play with. Squish from Manhattan toy. Wait, what? Toys? I'll let Vitas explain that one. And so there we were, brainstorming away, hitting this thing on our heads, playing with it, coming up with ideas. Uh, and, and at some point, I, I think it was Adrian who took it and he threw it on the ground. And it didn't break. And he's like, hey, look, that's a lot like an airbag. It's a lot like a landing system. So what if we could build a robot that could land, absorb that impact, and then it could also roll around and explore the planetary surface. And so they began to build robots modeled after these toys. They're a type of structure known as a tensegrity structure. Well, there are many, many different types of tensegrity structures. This is the six bar tensegrity structure. In tensegrity structures, rigid parts aren't directly connected to one another by nails or screws, but instead are held together by wires, cables, or elastic bands that connect the rigid parts. This gives tensegrity structures some unique properties that make them pretty robust. It can be squashed, um, it can be dropped, it can change its shape if you pull on the elastomers, and what we're showing with our rover is that you can actually make a structure like this walk. Here's how these robots work. Computers control motors that cause the cables to stretch or compress. This changes the tension and results in the structure shifting its shape, which creates a rolling motion. The idea is that it would go into a spacecraft. We might have several of them that are compactly packed. They would drop from an orbit onto the planet and then walk away. We'd have sensing instruments inside. Uh, the ability to take photographs or take samples, and the ability to navigate and maneuver on the surface and maybe map out the surface and get a better understanding of what it looks like close up. But these robots are still a long way off from making it to space. They are just now figuring out how to best design and program the robots to move. We're developing a lot of rapid prototype tensegrity structures. And so it's a type of problem solving where we look at uh, the goals and then we work backwards creatively to look at different sorts of ways of achieving that goal. And they test their prototypes to see how the robots move and perform. For instance, how fast can it go? How much energy is it gonna take to actually have and produce certain types of motion? How much force can it withstand? How far can we drop it? Can we throw it? 
We're just scratching the surface of what happens when you think about building Tensegrity robots. In the future, these cheaper, more robust robots could allow us to explore worlds that would otherwise be too risky and costly. Who knows what these robots could discover out there?